because I don't like you, it's just because there's probably a lot of background noise. We get a lot of feedback. There's a lot of you in here. Um, so just to make it easier for you guys to hear me, I've just muted all the microphones. So if you do want to say something, you can type a comment. I'll try and read it as we go along, but I'll probably just answer everything at the end. Today we are, well, we're going to do a nice energizing vinyasa. Um, and then this evening we'll do a restorative. So we're going to do it the right way around this week. I have written a quite a ambitious class, so hopefully I'll be able to stick to it. Um, and get you guys all energized for your Sundays. So if you have any injuries or you're not feeling very well, or if anything hurts, if you've got any aches or pains, just be very mindful of your own body. Be kind to yourself. I always say the same things in my physical classes as well. No one knows your body like you. If something doesn't feel right, that means it's not. Pull yourself out, take a break, have a drink of water, take a child's pose, rejoin us when you feel ready you can do as much or as little of the class as you would like it's your time it's your class um don't push yourself if you want to spend the next 45 minutes lying on the mat in shavasana please by all means do that um and that being said bring yourself onto your mat please make sure that you've got enough space around you to actually do the class without banging into walls or windows we're going to start seated obviously this is where i like to start i feel like it's in the middle so it's a nice neutral place to start and just give yourself a little wiggle around here so i always have excess energy when i bring myself down onto the mat give yourself a little shake look at those shoulders maybe draw circles with your body you can lift your hips here it's the only time i'm going to say it's okay to lift your hips just draw in a big old circle Really, really just shake off any little bits of static energy that you have. We want to bring ourselves into quite a still and peaceful place to start with. When you feel like you've kind of shaken all of that off, maybe give your shoulders a little roll. Bring yourself into a seated position. Take your palms onto your knees and turn them upwards. Drop those shoulders down, neck nice and long. Close your eyes. And let's take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Expand your abdomen and send all of your air down towards the bottom of your lungs. Filling them like glass all the way to the top. And when you reach the top, reverse the breath and navel to spine. And again, inhale. We always try and teach our bodies to breathe a little bit deeper. So maybe pause for a second at the top of your breath before you exhale. With every inhale, feel that breath washing through you as though it's cleansing you. Exhale, reversing the breath and just pushing out anything that is not serving you in this moment. Starting to tune out all distractions, thoughts and worries and just tune into your breath and your body. Taking this time for you, forgetting everything we did before or need to do after. Start to take an imaginary broom and sweep the mind clear of any clutter, wandering thoughts, anything you don't need right now. And feel your breath wash through that empty mind. And as you offload anything that isn't serving you, feel yourself become lighter. With every inhale, we sit taller, lengthen our spine and drop the shoulders down, feeling our neck grow long. Feeling ourselves grounding through the sit bones, grounded but lightweight. Feeling those shoulder blades drawing down towards the mat. Human beings tend to hold on to stress and anxiety in really, really subtle ways. We have three key tension points. So just checking in and making sure that those shoulders are dropped down away from the ears. We're not hunching them up and creating excess tension. Dropping them down, allowing your neck to grow long. Jaw soft and gentle, 
Unlock those back teeth, make sure they're not touching. And draw your tongue down away from the roof of the mouth. Maybe you want to open your mouth a tiny bit. Maybe you even want to stick your tongue out just a little bit like a puppy. Doesn't matter if you think you look silly. No one else can see you. Start to soften your facial features. Make sure you're not frowning unnecessarily, furrowing your brow. And allow that tension to be released and to see the difference in the way that you sit and the way that you feel when you just let go of those three points in your body. And as you inhale, let's start with a little gentle movement. Draw your chin towards your shoulder. It doesn't matter which one. And gently roll from shoulder to shoulder. Just start to move and mobilize the body. And if you want to progress that into a full head roll, by all means do. I know some people don't like a full roll of the neck, but if you do, make sure you take it both ways. Gently mobilizing. Bringing yourself back to center. Draw your fingers together at the front, interlacing them. So you feel those shoulders pulling apart at the back. I want you to imagine you're hugging a giant beach ball. So we're creating a circle shape in front of us. And as you do, curve the spine, drop the chin to your chest, make a C shape with your body. Inhale. Exhale, push those arms up towards the sky, lengthening upwards, drawing the shoulders down. Start to hinge towards the left, so we're stretching the right side of the body, keeping those bum cheeks glued down onto the mat. If you want to take your left hand to your right wrist and gently start to pull to get a little deeper into that stretch, by all means do. From hip to fingertip, you want to feel that stretch on the right side. Inhale, exhale, lean deeper. Really nice. Try and keep that body aligned. Try not to collapse forward. Imagining the top half of your body is in a toaster. Bringing yourself back to centre, switch hands, right hand to your left wrist and gently pull lateral stretch down the left side of the body. Make sure that you're still keeping your neck long, you don't want a disappearing neck. Inhale, we lengthen, exhale, reaching. Keep those bum cheeks glued down, if you feel that hip lifting, just gently pull yourself out the stretch a little. One more breath. Bring yourself back to centre, take those arms wide on either side and just give those wrists a little twist. Maybe wiggle the fingers at the same time. We'll just mobilise every single little bit of the body. Start to reach those arms behind you. Interlace the fingers, opening up your chest. Really nice deep shoulder stretch and breathe. Inhale. Keeping that right hand behind you, dropping it behind you in a nice straight line. Take that left arm now to the outside of your right knee. So your right hand is planted. It's acting as a secondary spine to keep you upright. Start to look over your right shoulder, inhale. As you exhale, push that left knee away and twist through the spine. Really, really feel that twist in the spine, the waist and the shoulders. So, twists are really really lovely ways of energizing the body and what we do when we're twisting is we're compressing out organs which releases toxins and the inhale just let go bring yourself back to center when we let go of the twist we're allowing fresh blood to flow through our organs take your left hand behind you like a secondary spine right hand comes to the outside of the left knee sit up nice and tall and twist push that knee away gaze over that left shoulder Imagining you're a dirty dishcloth and you're just wringing yourself out and then you're going to allow fresh water to flow through you when you release the twist. Just allowing yourself that little push. Give me one more breath. Get as deep into that twist as you can. Gently back to centre. Just give those shoulders a little roll up to the ears, down the spine. Drawing circles with those shoulder blades. Once more. Bring those palms in front of you and bring yourself into an all fours position on the mat. Spread the fingers, feet and knees flat on the mat. So what I want you to do is push down into the mat as though you're trying to energize the mat. You're trying to jet, 
generate energy through your palms and your knees. Draw that navel in towards the spine and you want a nice flat back in this position. So trying not to dip the spine. Nice and flat and engaged. And I want you to feel that energy pushing into the outside of your palms, into your little fingers, pushing down through the knees and the tops of your feet. And if you want to, you can tuck those toes under and gently lift the knees. Lift them about 10 centimeters off the mat. Keep the spine flat, engage the cores. Push back into your heels. Feel that engagement in your glutes and your core and hold, remembering your breath, inhale. So you'd be surprised in core exercises, I find people like to hold their breath. You will really find it a lot easier if you just breathe through it. Inhale. And exhale. Really nice. Give me five, four. Pushing into those heels. Three, two, and one. Drop the knees. And as you do, drop the navel to the floor, gaze up to the sky, opening that heart center in your pelvis. Exhale, cat pose, arching like a scared cat, crown of the head towards the floor. Inhale to hollow out the lower back, gazing upwards. And exhale, so we're mobilizing our spine. And if you like this movement, in time with your breath, please continue. And if you would like to take this time to freestyle and just get a little bit weird, get your wiggle on, then by all means do. Get into any of the nooks and crannies in your body that you feel need to be mobilized, need to be woken up. Just giving yourself a wiggle. Maybe you wanna circle those wrists. Maybe you wanna circle the body. Maybe you wanna just draw a figure of eights with your hips. Maybe you wanna get your neck involved. Maybe you wanna sit back into your child's pose, reach those arms out in front, bring yourself all the way forward into cobra, whatever feels good for you. Try and make a nice fluid movement where you're just mobilizing every little bit of the body. It doesn't even need to be yoga. You can just feel like you're dancing here. And just getting into all of those little sections, those little tiny corners of your body that you feel just need to be stretched out, moved, Woken up a little bit. Really, really nice. If you just want to continue with your cat cow, then by all means do. This is just if you do want to. You can stretch out your wrists as well. If you're working on arm balances at all, this is a good one. This wrist strengthening and stretching. And give me one more breath here. Gently bring yourself back into your all fours position, flat back. Take your right toe, pointing it, and you're gonna send that right leg out behind you in a nice straight line. And I'm just gonna show you from the front now what we're gonna do. So that leg, you're gonna to start to draw a semicircle with that toe and bring the right foot in line with your left knee. So it helps to find something to line up with. So if you do it on the corner of your mat, then you can use that. Once you feel that they're aligned, walk your hands back. Start to curl up through the spine and reach those arms up towards the sky, shoulders down, arms in line with your ears in your gate pose. Plant that right foot flat. And then start to bring that right arm down towards your right calf and reach over with that left arm. So kind of got like what we were doing at the beginning, but a much deeper stretch, lateral stretch all the way down the left side of the body. Push that left hip out so you're making yourself into like a little half moon and reach with those left fingers. Try and keep the body open so we're not collapsing into it. Keeping those hips aligned so they're not falling, so that you're not letting the right leg fall backwards. You wanna keep them nice and aligned, give me one more breath. Reach as far as you can and then as you exhale, bring that left hand down onto the mat in line with the left knee. Bring that right arm up into your gate pose. So you want a straight line from shoulder to shoulder, from wrist to wrist, arms in a nice parallel line. Not parallel, that's not what I meant. <laughs> from wrist to wrist, so your shoulders are stacked on top of each other in a nice straight line, that's what I meant. So you're gonna, if you wanna stay here lovely, make sure those hips are stacked as well. And if you wanna go a little further, you can lift that right leg out and you can bring that right arm out in front of you. So you want a straight line from finger to toe. And if you want to take this a little further, bend the right knee behind you, take that right hand and kick the right foot into your right hand, giving yourself a stretch through the shoulder and the spine and a balance. 
And if you are balancing, find a drishti, a place to rest your gaze, and just hold here. Give me five, four, wherever you are. Three, two, well done, and one, letting go. And just bring yourself back around into your all fours position but keeping that leg out behind you and then you're going to bend that right knee and flex the right foot well done and we're just going to start to draw circles with our knee just to open up the hips go forward first we'll go one two three and four back the other way one two try and keep your hips aligned three and four and keeping that leg out behind you foot flex knee bend push down through your palms tuck that left toe under and push up into your three legged dog well done lovely take a nice deep breath here and if you want to stay here really nice by all means do with the foot flexed and the knee bent if you want to open your hip Send your right leg, almost like you're trying to walk it the whole way over. Make sure that you're not kind of twisting through the shoulders. You still want to make sure that those shoulders have an equal distribution of weight. And if you want to actually walk the whole way over and take your wild thing pose, by all means do. Come up onto the ball of your right foot. Left hand solid, left foot solid and flat, reaching back with that right arm and sending those hips all the way up towards the sky. And wherever you are in this pose, three-legged hip opener or wild thing, give me five, four, three, two, and one. Wild things, walk yourself back into your three-legged dog. And everyone now, straight that leg out behind you. Full three-legged dog. And as you inhale, we're gonna draw that knee in towards the chest. Exhale, you're gonna send it back to your three-legged dog. Everyone's favorite. Inhale, let's take the knee to our right elbow. Exhale, back to our three-legged. Inhale, the knee's going to come across to the opposite. Exhale, three-legged. And again, knee to centre. Exhale, three-legged dog. Knee to your right elbow. Exhale, three-legged. Knee to the opposite elbow. Exhale, three-legged dog. Once more on this side, knee to chest. Exhale, three-legged dog. Knee to elbow. Exhale, three-legged. Knee to your opposite elbow. Exhale, three-legged dog. And bring the knee to the center, and this time plant that right foot, tuck the left toe under, low lunge. Make sure that right ankle is underneath the right knee. Inhale, bring those arms up in line with your ears, sinking into that front knee bend. So your runner's lunge, so if you are running at the moment, this is a good one to do before or after you run. It's good for stretching out those hip flexors and strengthening the quads and the hamstrings. So if you're happy here, lovely. If you would like to take a little monkey twist with me, you're gonna take your left hand to the outside of your mat. So we take the mat out of the equation. Reach your right arm out in front, so that's your bent knee arm. Circle that arm all the way behind you and gazing at your fingers. And if you would like to, you can lift up that back knee and take the left foot in your hand. You're very welcome to do that but you also don't have to. So whichever version you're in, let's sink into those hips, really stretching out those hip flexors. Really nice, everyone, well done. Give me five, four, three, two, and one. Drop that back foot if you're holding it. Bring both hands on either side of that front foot, bend the back knee, straight the front leg and flex that right foot deep and juicy hamstring stretch here. Inhale as you lift and exhale, try and fold yourself forward. So remembering it's much better to not be low into the stretch but to keep your spine flat. So what you want to avoid is becoming hunchback of Notre Dame to just try and get deeper. And you'll notice as well that actually the stretch will be a lot more valuable to you if you do keep your spine flat, even if you don't get as deep, because your hips will be aligned and you are actually hinging from the hips, which gets into all the right places on the hamstrings. If you've ever had a hamstring injury before, you will know they are an absolute bugger. And this is a really, really nice one to just try and ease yourself back into that stretch. Inhale. And exhale. I'm just going to switch sides so that when we do the next thing, you guys can see what I'm doing. Inhale, we lengthen, exhale, fold deep. Give me one more breath here. 
and start to bend that right leg. And you're just going to walk the hands to the center and bring yourself into a side lunge. Really nice. And from here, we're going to bring ourselves all the way across to the left. So we're just going to stretch those legs out and back to the right. So like a little spider. And if you can do this with no hands, then you are a better person than me because it's really hard. So well done. Give me one, two, three, four. Really nice. And five, bringing yourself back into your side plank. Take those hands on either side of that front foot and step back into your plank position. Well done. Plank nice and solid. So in your plank, make sure those wrists are under the shoulders, body in a nice straight line, core engaged. And we're gonna do a little bit, it's like a Pilates move. It's a really good one for core and alignment. You're gonna take your knees and we're just gonna walk those knees one at a time, but keeping that body nice and straight. We're gonna go one, two, three, keep that bum aligned, four, five, six, and step into your side plank. So if side plank is just not in your practice, do not worry, drop the bottom knee, come back into your gate pose, always making sure that your arms are in a nice straight line with shoulders on top of each other. If you are in side plank and you feel like that is too easy, feel free to lift that top leg, you can also try and take hold of your big toe, take a balance that way, or you can even take hold of your bottom big toe and straighten out that way. Wherever you are, give me five, four, three, two, and one. Step back into your plank position and drop those knees down onto the mat, back into your all fours. So if you need to give your wrists a little stretch here, by all means do give them a shake out. You could do, I love to do this in between things where I put a lot of pressure on my wrists, kind of like I'm squeezing stress balls. It just uh, loosens up all my tendons. And then when you're ready, bring yourself back into that all fours position. Take a nice deep breath, point that left toe and bring the left leg out behind you in a nice straight line. Well done. And when you're ready, you're going to draw a semicircle with that left foot and bring it round so it's in line with your right. Start to walk the hands back, rolling up and reach the arms up towards the sky. Arms in line with your ears, hips aligned. Make sure that foot is in line with your right knee. Place the left foot flat. Start to bring that left hand down onto the left leg and the right arm up and over. Make sure the arms in line with your ears. Make sure that the top half of your body, in fact, your whole body is like you've been popped in a toaster. So try not to collapse inwards. Push that right hip out. Make sure those hips stay aligned so the left hip isn't falling backwards. Really nice. Feel yourself lengthening through the right side. Take a nice deep breath. Then drop that right hand down in line with your right leg. Bringing that left arm up, so making sure the shoulders are stacked on top of each other. Arms in a nice straight line, so from wrist to wrist. If you're happy here, lovely, if you want to go a little further, lifting that left leg, bring the left arm out in front. Straight line from fingertip to toe. And if you want to go further still, bending that left knee, reaching back, take hold of the left foot with your left hand and kick that left hand, left foot into your left hand, getting a nice deep stretch through the shoulders and the spine. Find somewhere to rest your gaze and hold. Give me five, four, three, two, and one, and gently bring yourself back into your all fours position, but keeping that leg out behind, you're gonna bend the left knee, flex the left foot. Well done, lovely, let me just change sides. And let's do our little hip opening circle. So start to draw circles forward first. We're gonna go one, two, three, and four, back the other way. One, two, three, and four, and bring that leg behind you. Tuck that right toe under, push down through both palms, and send yourself into a three-legged dog with the knee bent and the foot flex. Nice straight line all the way down your spine. Happy here, lovely. If you want to open up your hips, gaze underneath your left armpit, make sure that those shoulders have an equal distribution of weight. The palms are nice and steady. And if you're wanting to go a little further, you can walk the whole way over. Take your wild thing pose now. Reach back with that left arm. 
and breathe here. Wherever you are, if you're a three-legged dog, hip opener or wild thing, give me five, four, hips high, three, two, and one. Wild thing, back to your three-legged and everyone, straight that leg out behind you. Four, three-legged dog. Send that left knee in towards your chest. And back, three-legged. And to the outside of your left. Back to three-legged, well done. And to the opposite elbow. And three-legged, and again to chest. And three-legged dunk. And to your elbow. Three-legged dunk. And to the opposite. Three-legged, last time to chest. Three-legged. And to the elbow. Three-legged dog, opposite elbow, well done. And then draw that knee in towards your chest, plant the left foot, send the right leg back, come into your low lunge, your runner's lunge on the left-hand side. Make sure that wrist, that wrist, that ankle is under the knee. I'm getting all my body parts. My Lord, this morning, bring those arms up in line with your ears and sink into that front knee bend. What you want to try and make sure though is if you're sinking, you don't want the knee to go forward past the foot past your toes, hips squared to the front, get deep into those hip flexors, strengthening our hamstrings and our quads. If you're happy here, love, if you want to take your monkey twist, right hand comes to the outside of the mat, taking the mat out of the equation. Left arm coming out in front. Really nice, your bent knee arm, you're going to circle that arm all the way back, gazing behind you, and if you want to, you can lift that back foot, your right foot, kick that foot into your hand, and breathe, inhale. And exhale, really feel those hips stretching. Well done. And give me five, four, three, two, and one. Drop that back knee, bring hands on either side of that front leg, bend the right leg, flex the left foot, straight the left leg, inhale. And as you exhale, start to fold forward. Remember trying to keep your back as flat as possible, no hunchback of Notre Dame. Inhale, we lengthen, exhale. Always trying to walk those hands a little further forward and pull yourself deeper into the stretch, but at the same time, trying not to mess up our alignment. Inhale. And exhale. Sink nice and deep into that hamstring stretch. Nice and indulgent here. Take one more breath. Plant that left foot and bring yourself into your side plank, hands in the middle. Lovely. And ready, let's go from side to side. One, two, three, well done. Four, five, and last one, six. Bring yourself back into hands on either side. Just push back into your plank position. Really nice. And take a nice deep breath here, and we're going to do our knees. So making sure your body stays straight. So what I don't want to see here is this, where you're kind of sending your bum up. Everything nice and aligned. Core engaged, bum tucked in. And let's go march with those legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. And bring yourself over, side plank on the left-hand side. Make sure straight line from wrist to wrist, shoulders stacked on top of each other. If you want to drop that bottom knee, by all means do. And if you want to lift that top leg also, or if you want to take hold of that big toe and straighten out, you can also try and do it with the bottom leg. Wherever you are, give me five, four, three, two, and one. Bring yourself back into your plank position. And you have an option here, you can either push straight back into your downward facing dog or join me for a vinyasa. Tuck those elbows in, come down through your chaturanga. Push forward up from facing. Good for your posture, this one. Make sure the thighs are off the mat, tops of the feet down, and push back. Downward facing dog. So, downward dog. We are pushing into our palms, into the outside of our palms and our little fingers. Maybe very gently softening our elbows, pulling our shoulders away from the ears and rotating the shoulders outwards to avoid any rotator cuff injuries. Make sure there's a straight line from your tailbone all the way down. And if you feel like your back is not straight, bend your knees. I soften my knees in most down dogs that I do. It puts less pressure on my spine. It puts less pressure on my hamstrings and my calves. So downward dog is a powerhouse. 
it's really really just getting into the whole body energizing and stretching our calves our hamstrings our arches our hands our shoulders our spine strengthening our shoulders so from here take a nice deep breath and you're going to start to lift the heels off the mat keep that navel drawn in towards the spine exhale drop the heels good one so loosening up tight hamstrings and calves inhale we lift exhale lower well done and lift and lower really nice and give me five and lower four and lower three and lower two and lower and one and inhale drop forward into a plank position again making sure you're nice and aligned and you're going to drop those knees, push the bum back towards the heels and come back up into your downward dog. So we're going to do a few of those little circles. So inhale into your plank, drop the knees, exhale, bum back, downward dog. Inhale, plank, knees, bum, down dog. Plank, knees, bum, down dog. Well done. Let's go for three. Knees, bum, down dog. And two. Knees. Bum down dog, last one. Knees bump down dog. Lovely. Take a nice deep breath here. And send that right leg all the way up towards the sky. And then bringing it forward, plant that right foot coming into a high lunge. Arms up in line with your ears. Make sure the hips are underneath the shoulders. Knee is above the ankle. Take a deep breath, inhale, turn that left foot out, tuck the tailbone under, come into your warrior two, arms in line with your shoulders, gaze down those front fingertips. Just going to switch sides. Well done. And from here, we're going to start to gaze forward, down the front fingers, lean forward, turn that right palm upwards, and then bring that left arm down the back of the left leg, right arm up and over, reversing the warrior. If you're happy here, love, if you want to take a half bind, bring that left arm all the way around to touch your right thigh. Really nice. That is completely optional. Breathe here, take a nice deep breath. And unravel the arms. Straight both legs. Bring your fingers on to your hips. Make sure both feet are facing straight ahead. And you're going to start to hinge forward through the hips, bringing yourself down into a flat back. So let's stop halfway. Bring your right arm down onto the mat in the center, so it's between both legs, and you're gonna to turn to the left side of your body and reach that left arm up into your star pose. So what you wanna aim for, if you've got a mirror or a camera and you can see what you're doing, is a straight line all the way from arm to arm, from finger to finger, shoulders on top of each other, and the legs are coming out on either side. So if you read Harry Potter, you wanna look like one of the Deathly Hallows. And try and gaze up at that extended arm if you can. And breathe, feel that stretch on the back of the hamstrings, twisting. One more breath, well done. Gently drop both hands. Start to walk your hands back in line with your feet and draw your head towards the mat. Take your wide leg forward, forward, feel that stretch through the hamstrings, lengthening through your spine, really good for lower back pain, this one. Inhale, exhale, folding. Really nice. Deep breath here. Start to walk your hands back into an upright position, into a flat back position, and then walk your hands around to the left foot, the right foot, sorry. Bring your palms on either side of your front foot and step back into your plank position. Body in a nice straight line, core engaged. Options here, if you want to push straight back up into your down dog, by all means do, and if you want to join me for a vinyasa, let's tuck those elbows in. Come down through your chaturanga. Push forward, up with facing dog. Push back, down with facing. Really nice. Take your left leg now out behind you, bringing it up into your three legs. Send that left knee forward, planting the foot. High lunge on the left hand side. Make sure those hips are under the shoulders. Make sure that knee is above the ankle. Inhale. Turn that right foot out. Bring yourself into your warrior two arms in line with your shoulders. 
tuck your tailbone under, gaze down those front fingertips, start to hinge forward, turn the left palm upwards and send the right arm down the back of the right leg. Reverse warrior, peaceful warrior. And bring that left arm back. And if you want to take your half bind, by all means, bring that right arm all the way around to touch the left thigh. And hold here, inhale. Exhale, sitting into that front knee bend. Really nice, well done. Take one more deep breath here. Straight both legs, bring your fingers on to your hips. Make sure both feet are facing straight ahead. Start to hinge forward through the hips with a flat back. Bring yourself down about halfway and then drop that left arm now into the center. Taking your star pose, gaze to the right, opening your chest to the right and bring that arm up. Deep breath here, inhale. So remember, you want a straight line from wrist to wrist, from shoulder to shoulder, all down the center of your body. Try and gaze up at that extended arm if you can. And give me five, four, three, two, and one. Drop your hands. Come back into your wide leg, forward fold. If you want to, you can take your fingers to your big toes and start to pull those elbows out to the side. Lengthening through the spine. And breathe in here. Give me one more deep breath. Bring those hands back to center and start to walk them around on either side of the left foot for real this time. Place the palms flat and step back into your plank position. So again, push back into your downward dog or join me for vinyasa. Tuck your elbows in and come down. Push back into your upward facing. And downward facing dog. Really nice. And from your down dog, let's walk our feet wide. So they're about as wide as the mat. Start to walk your hands back. And as you do, bend the knees. Bring yourself into your malasana, your yoga squat. So just to get yourself used to this position, give yourself a little wiggle. Bounce from side to side. Doesn't even have to be yoga. You can give yourself a little dance move if you want. Whatever feels good to try and get you into this position. If you can't bring your feet flat, don't worry. So you want to aim to have fat, flat feet and bring your palms together at heart center. Use your elbows to push those legs apart and breathe here, deep inhale. And exhale. And then place your palms flat on the floor and you're going to just start to straight those legs out behind you and then drop back down into your yoga school and again straight the legs well done and drop back down if it hurts your hamstrings you don't have to straight the legs fully we're going to go again straight the legs drop the head towards the floor and bring yourself back down and let's go two more and straight the legs and back down and once more straight the legs and back down and then this time we're going to straight the legs and you're just going to heel toe those feet together, softening the knees. So try not to straight the legs too much to begin with. Glue the torso onto the thigh and just take hold of your elbows and gently sway from side to side in your Uttanasana, your forward fold. Just ragdoll the top half of the body. So if you would like to start to bring the hands down towards the floor and try and straight the legs a little bit, by all means do. But what we don't want here is straight legs and a curve in the spine, as always, much better to have slightly bent knee. So take a nice deep breath and we're going to start to roll up through the spine, very slowly, unraveling like a chain link. Unrolling, keeping that chin tucked into your chest. Bring yourself all the way up to standing into your mountain pose, feet together, arms down by your side. Make sure the joints are stacked, really good for your posture. So wrist your ankles under knees, under hips, under shoulders. Sounds really, really obvious, but what you want to make sure is that you're not sticking your bum out or sticking your hips forward. Pelvis, nice and neutral. So always visualize your pelvis as a glass of water. What you want to make sure is that you're never spilling the water. So that means sticking your bum out or sticking it forward. And that little tip will really help with your posture. Dropping those shoulders down, reach the fingers down towards the ground, energizing through them, engage the legs isometrically. Make sure that your chin is in line with the rest of your body. Take a nice deep breath, inhale, reach the arms up above the above your head towards the sky, bringing your palms together, gaze up at your thumbs. 
Exhale, bring the arms out to the side, bend the elbows, start to hinge at the hips, soften the knees, fold forward, back to your forward foot. Inhale, start to unroll like a chain link, one vertebra at a time, keeping that chin tucked in towards your chest. Bring yourself all the way up into your mountain pose, arms down by your side. Inhale, reach the arms up above the head, extended mountain, keep the shoulders down, gaze up at your thumbs. And exhale, elbows out to the side, hinge at the hips, bend the knees, folding all the way back forward. Uttanasana, forward fold. And one more time, rolling all the way up, unraveling like a chain link, really, really letting each vertebra of your spine have a moment in this unraveling. Bring yourself into your mountain pose, arms down by the side, engage your legs isometrically, drawing those fingers down towards the mat. Inhale, reach your arms up above your head. Exhale, bring your arms out to the side, bend the elbows, hinge at the hips, soften the knees, Uttanasana, forward fold. And just start to walk your hands back into your plank position. Take a nice deep breath here, either pushing straight back into your down dog or you're going to join me for a vinyasa, tuck those elbows in, come down, push forward up for facing dog, push back, down facing. Really nice, slight bend in your knees, gaze straight ahead, step float or jump between your legs into a seated position on your mats. Really nice. Bring your feet together like palms into your bound angle pose, opening up your hips, sit up nice and tall, inhale. And as you exhale, feel your knees drawing apart, dropping down on either side of the mat. So this pose gives you the feeling of being wide open because it increases blood flow to your pelvic floor. Inhale and exhale and if you want to come a little forward take a little um, forward fold just bring your feet out in front so there's a diamond shape by your legs and start to hinge at the hips you can use your elbows to push those knees down as well really breathe nice and deep into it and as always make sure that you're not curving that spine you're not becoming the hunchback of notre dame take one more deep breath Gently start to unravel, bring yourself up to seated. Take those legs in front of you, bend the knees, plant the feet flat. We're going to take our boat pose, lovely one for our abs. So you have three options here. Option number one, you're going to take your hands behind you and you're going to bring your legs up into a tabletop position, making sure that spine stays nice and flat. Option number two, you can let the arms come out on either side so you're balancing on your sit bones. And option three, for those of you that think this is too easy, you can straight the legs. And hold here, engage the core, keep the back nice and straight. Your legs will probably shake. Hold, keep that neck long, back straight. Give me five, well done, four, three, two, and one. Slow motion, we're gonna go down. Peel that spine onto the mat, but just the spine. Keep the legs lifted, keep the head and shoulders lifted. So you're gonna end up flat back, Feet are about 10 to 20 centimeters off the floor. Reaching your fingers towards your feet, lift the head and shoulders, engaging your core. Dish pose, give me five, four, three, two, and one. Let go, bring your arms down by your side. Take your knees into a tabletop position, back flat. Drop those knees all the way over to the right and gaze to the left. And then bring those knees all the way over to the left and gaze to the right. So when we're twisting, we always look in the opposite direction. <laughs> I think my child is trying to come in and say hi. And just give yourself a little twist through the spine. And bring yourself back to center. Place your feet flat on the mat, knees bent. So feet and knees about hip width apart and your, flat, your back completely flat. So we're gonna take our shoulder bridge. And I really like to finish with a shoulder bridge because it's a bit of a powerhouse, but it's also quite relaxing. So your shoulder bridge is really good for stress and anxiety, insomnia. It's really, really good for the glutes and the hamstring strengthening. And it's amazing for pelvic floor. So ladies, if you've had a baby, this is a really, really good one for you, or feel pregnant, or just anyone in general, you should strengthen your pelvic floor, but 
um, particularly if you've had a baby, it's a wonderful one. So feet and knees hip width apart, spine flat, and a very, very slight tilt to the pelvis. If your spine's flat, you'll feel that it's very gently lifted. It will only be obvious to you. Bring your palms down on either side of the hips. Shoulders down, neck long, take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, we're gonna send those hips up towards the sky. Imagine someone's got a piece of string lifting up by the pelvis. And we're keeping the knees and feet parallel, so not bowing them out to the side. And you'll notice the difference that when you keep them parallel, you'll feel that engagement in the glutes and the hamstrings. If you want to, you can walk the shoulders together underneath your back and interlace the fingers. Get those hips nice and high. Try and keep your gaze straight ahead. Try not to turn your head to the side like I'm doing because then you'll mess up your alignment a little bit. Keeping those feet flat. Inhale. And exhale. And ladies, if you want to practice your Kegels here, inhale to release. Exhale, engage the pelvic floor. Draw them up into your belly. Exhale, inhale, release. Exhale, engage. Keeping those hips nice and high. And give me a five, four, keep that breath flowing. Three, two, and one, bring the arms out on either side very gently. Start to peel yourself back down onto the mat. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Apanasana gently rocking from side to side. To just release your spine. Really nice. And in your own time, start to straighten out, point your fingers, point your toes, bring your arms up above your head, reaching from one side of the room to the other. Full body strengths. If you've done my classes before, you'll know what to do now. Full body stretch, we're reaching from one side of the room to the other. Imagine someone's got you by the fingers, someone's got you by the toes. They're trying to pull you. You can't get away. They're almost trying to add inches on to your body. Every single part of your body should be tense, including your face, make the ugliest face you've ever made in your life. Screw up those eyes, beady eyes, scrunched up face, a million double chins. Do all the things that I've told you not to do in the class, do them now. Draw those shoulders up so that your neck disappears. Really, really reaching and tensing. Really, really tight. Your body should be shaking from this tension. And while we're throwing all our mental tension in, put, put all, while we're throwing all our physical tension in, put all your mental tension in as well. So just throw in anything that's pissing you off, anything that's annoying you. We don't want them to come with us through the rest of this day. Make it a nice, peaceful Sunday. Let's build up all our tension now and just let it go. Throw it all in. Reaching, reaching, reaching. Give me five, four, three. And one, bring your arms down by your side. Let it all go. Deep breath, inhale, allow your feet to fall open, palms fall open. And exhale. And if you want to grab a jumper, a drink of water, some socks, a blanket, a cushion, whatever you need for your Shavasana, then by all means do. Um, on the other hand, if you don't want to take Shavasana, um, I know it's not for everyone. You are very welcome to sign up now. I absolutely will not be offended by that at all. Um, I fully recommend taking Shavasana lying down on your mats, but if you would like to take it in another way, then please do. Just going to close the door so that the sound of my loud child does not disturb everyone trying to relax. Okay, everybody melting down into the mats. Palms open, feet falling open. And take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Expand your abdomen and send all of that air down towards the bottom of your lungs. Filling them like a glass all the way to the top. And as you exhale, reverse the breath, navel to spine. Bring yourself back to where you were at the beginning of the class with no thoughts or worries. Taking that imaginary broom again and just sweeping the mind completely clear. And with every breath, trying to deepen that breath a little more. 
Checking back in with those tension points. Shoulders away from the ears, neck long. Feeling those shoulder blades glide down at your spine, melting into the mat like lava. Face soft and gentle, no frowning, no furrowing of the brow. Jaw unlocked, back teeth unclenched, and tongue drawn down away from the roof of the mouth. And let's take our attention to our feet. Feeling them fall open on the mat, each toe relaxing one by one. Ankles, calves, knees and thighs becoming lightweight on the mat. All the way up to the base of your spine and feeling each vertebrae unravel one by one as though someone is pressing down the keys on a piano. All the way up to your shoulders and feel those shoulders melt down even further away from the ears. Arms lightweight at your side as though someone has taken the batteries out of you. Arms open, fingers unraveled. Neck long, head light. Facial features soft and gentle. Jaw unlocked. And as you lay here, allow yourself to become completely light, not just in body, but in mind as well. Free of any physical or mental tension. Become so light that you can almost lift from the mat and float away. Just the gentle pull of your breath pushing you along as you inhale and exhale. And start to wiggle your fingers and toes to draw awareness back into your bodies. Hug your knees into your chest. And gently rock from side to side to release the spine. Bringing yourself all the way over onto the right hand side into a fetal position. And then gently bringing yourself up to seated. Bring your palms onto your knees. You can keep your eyes closed if you want to. Take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, just let out a deep sigh, like you're really just letting everything go. And again, inhale. Well, once more for luck, the deepest sigh, inhale. Draw your palms together at your heart center. Thank you all so much for practicing with me this Sunday morning. I hope that you have a lovely rest of your day. I hope it's not as gray and miserable for you as it is here. Take a lovely Sunday. Take a lovely Sunday. Have a lovely Sunday. Be happy, healthy, and safe. Namaste. And remember, I'm doing restorative tonight, so you can either do that on Facebook Live or on here. Um, you're very welcome to join that as well. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.
Love you, Laura. I'll see you guys later, hopefully, otherwise tomorrow.